Welcome viewers, in this video we will see the phasor diagram of transformer on loaded condition. Subscribe this channel for more videos on notification. Soft copy of this material available in the drive. The link is given in the description box. Now we will go to the topic transformer and load. For that we can see the phasor diagram. The transformer and load the topic is available in the separate video. For that also link is available in the description box. Now we will go to the phasor diagram. So we have so resistive load and inductive load. Capacity load also available that see later. First we will see the resistive load and inductive load. First we will see resistive load. So during no loaded condition, we will see that first no load condition, the current I0 will flowing through the primary winding. When the secondary is not connected with any load, that is called a transformer on no load. So at that time the current I0 is flowing, any small amount of current I0 is flowing in the pri primary winding. Now we will see that V1, we will take this V1 is the primary applied voltage, we will take this is the reference. We will take the primary applied voltage V1 as reference. So this no load current I0 having two components, magnetizing component and working component. Magnetizing component is nothing but it is used, it is the responsible for producing the magnetic flux in the primary winding, even the no loaded condition. IW is the working component that is nothing but ion loss. This ion loss is in phase with the voltage. This magnetizing current is 90% 90 out of phase, 90 degree out of phase. So due to this I mu flux is produced, so both are in phase. So we will take this V1 as a reference. During no load condition, we got I0. I0 is the vector sum of IW and I mu. IW is the ion component or working component or active component that is in phase with the applied voltage. But the magnetizing current I mu is out of 90 degree out of phase with the V1. This I mu responsible for producing the flux pi. These two are in phase. Now when the transformer is loaded, if it is loaded what will happen? This I2 dash current will flowing through the primary winding. So this I2 dash also in phase with the voltage. But total current I1, this I2 dash is due to the loaded. When the transformer is loaded, I2 current will flow in the secondary. That due to that one more current flowing in the primary is called a I2 dash. So the total primary current is nothing but vector sum of this I2 dash and I0. See this I0 and I2 dash both are added together so that we are getting the total primary current I1. So because of resistive load this I2 dash and V1 are in phase. Both are in in phase. The current and voltage primary current and voltage are in phase because of resistive load. So that we have another term I2. I2 is nothing but current flowing in the secondary winding that is opposite to that of primary winding. What is E1 and E2? The EM of induced in primary winding and secondary winding. So based on the Lenz law, the EM of induced is opposing the cost producing that is opposing the flux. So this is the applied voltage, this is the EM of induced. So based on Lenz law, both are opposite to each other. So that it is vary by the E1 and E2 is out of phase. It's an opposite direction. E1 and E2 is opposite to the 180 degree out of phase. Right? So I will explain again. So we are taking V1 as a reference, primary applied voltage. Under no load condition, we have I0, no load current. That is having two components, working component and magnetizing component. Working component in phase with the a voltage, but the magnetizing component out of phase, 90 degree out of phase. This component is responsible for producing the flux. Both are equal. Both are in phase. So vector sum of these two is I0. When the transformer is loaded, this I2 current is flowing through the secondary winding. Due to that, I2 dash is flowing through the primary winding. So that I2 dash is in phase with the applied voltage because of resistive load. Because of resistive load, I2 dash and V1 are in phase. The vector sum of I2 dash and I0 is the vector this is I1, total primary current. Right? So this is the angle pi0, that is the angle between I0 and V1. 
So this E1 and E2 is the induced EMF based on the lens law, induced EMF oppose the applied voltage so that both are opposite to each other. In case of inductive load, the same process I0 is available, so vector sum of IW and I mu, but the I2 dash when the transformer is loaded, we got I2 current in the secondary. So due to that, we have I2 dash current in the primary. Because of inductive load, the current in the primary is lagging the applied voltage. Lagging the applied voltage. There is a lagging between the voltage and current. That is current is lagging. Current is lagging the applied voltage by pi 2. This pi naught is the angle between W, IW and I naught that is a different thing that is no loaded condition this is loaded condition there is a lagging of current is lagging with the applied voltage by pi 2 here both are in phase i2 dash and v1 are in phase there is no angle but in here due to inductive load current is lagging the applied voltage by pi 2 similarly the other things are similar e1 and e2 the capacitive load we will see later now we will go to the description. Take the primary voltage as a reference. We will take the primary voltage as reference. No load current I0 lagging V1 by an angle pi0. So there is a lagging of V1, I, V1 and I0 by this pi0. The magnitude of I mu set up the flux pi that is in phase with the I mu. I mu is at 90 degree with V1. The phase angle between I mu and V1 is 90 degree. This I mu produce the flux pi, but I mu and flux pi are in phase. Working component are of no load current. I w is in phase with the V1. There is no lagging, there is in phase. Due to flux pi, an EMF is produced in the E1. Is produced in the EMF, E1 and E1 in the primary, E2 in the secondary due to the flux we have induced em of e1 and e2 in the primary and secondary em of oppose the cost producing so that e1 and e2 are anti-phase with v1 right now when the secondary is loaded the current i2 is flowing in the secondary when this load i0 is the current flowing in the primary under no loaded condition this i2 is the current flowing in secondary during the loaded condition if the load is purely resistive, I2 is in phase with E2. If the load is inductive, I2 lags the E2 by pi2. If load is capacitive, I2 leads the E2 by pi2. So, the based on the load, it may be in phase or lagging or leading. That already we discussed in the diagram also. When a current I2 flows, in the primary which is anti-phase with I2 because of I2 one more current is flowing through the primary winding that's both are opposite both are anti-phase the primary current I1 is the vector sum of I0 and I2 that also we discussed now we'll see the capacitive load we already discussed the resistive load and inductive load now we'll see the capacitive load so this applied voltage V1 is taken as reference this current I0 during no loaded condition is a vector sum of I w and I mu. This I mu is 90 degree opposite to that V1. I mu produce the flux pi. This working component is in phase with the applied voltage. Now, when the transformer is loaded, we are getting the current I2 in the secondary winding. This I2, due to this I2, one more current flowing in the primary winding is called I2 dash. See this, this I2 and this applied voltage V1, this I2 is leading the volt, leading the applied voltage because of capacitive load. Because of the capacitive load, this I2 dash current flowing in the primary winding is leading the applied voltage V1. In case of resistive load in phase, in case of inductive load, this I2 is lagging. In case of capacity load, I2 is leading. This vector sum of this I2 and I0 is nothing but the total primary current I1, right? Similarly, this E1 and E2 induced EMF, which is anti-phase with the V1 because of Lenz law. So, in this video, we discuss about the equal the phasor diagram when the transformer is loaded condition for a three different loaded loading conditions: resistive load, inductive load, and capacity load. Subscribe the channel for more videos and notification. 
soft copy of this material available in the drive. Link is given in the description box. Thank you for listening.